all right? The third part of my deal is RPO install, okay, or the technique part of it. It's passing game, day one install, 2016, 2017. For us, what we do is we teach the quick game first, and then we try to incorporate what our kid can throw into an RPO system. The hitch, the slant, the out, the fade, the spot, what we're trying to get done from there. Quarterback play, the number one thing your quarterback must know is you're in his corner, all right? Number two, the fundamentals and techniques are the key to success. It's not scheme. It's not because you can get on the internet and you can find all the coolest RPOs. There's so much film out there now. Just put it on Twitter and, and hashtag something and something will pop up and these are the neatest things. That's great, but how do you throw it? How do you run the route? How do you execute? How do you time and ball placement? What are those things are important? Not just, hey, I'm going to go out and throw this because I saw this play on TV. I want to teach you how we teach those fundamentals from there. When we talk to our kids about the RPOs and the run pass options and techniques, we talk in terms of two types. We have a pre-snap RPO and we have a post-snap RPO. That basically means before the ball is snapped, where are we going with the ball? Are you giving me a gift? Is the stick route open to number three on the hitch? Is the boundary route open? Are you giving me two to the flat against the soft four? Is the sandbacker in more than halfway? All of these things are pre-snap potential RPOs. And if they give it to you, you got to take it. Okay, you can't let them gang you gang up on you in the box. If you do, that's your fault. You're going to take your ball and go home with an L probably. Post-snap RPOs, these are after you ride and decide and you make a decision as to what's going to happen after that you're trying to affect that player. And we'll kind of talk about how we teach. We call it dart where we ride and decide and we make that dart decision where we go from knee to knee, and I'll kind of walk you through that. So a pre-snapped RPO for us is a called run play with two passes attached. We got a field concept and a boundary concept. When we start off teaching it, they're mirrored, but then we, we build it into different concepts. We either have a field, we have, a, we have a basically a man concept one way and a zone concept that's good versus universal, or we got a one high beater on one side and a two high beater on the other. And some teams will have a blitz concept over here, and if they're a one high blitz team, then we'll have a one high concept over here. So you have to uh, balance out what you're doing. So for us, half our schedule is one high, half our schedule is two high. So we have about four RPOs that we're going to run this year against one high coverage and blitz, and that's it. And we're only going to run them against those four or five teams. And then we have four or five other teams that are two high middle of the field open teams that we're going to run these four RPOs concepts against and blitz against, and we're going to live, work with them all summer. Now, we can mix and match, and we carry them all from week to week, but – our emphasis basically boils down to what do we see? What do we have to attack on our schedule to be good at? Example, inside zone with a spot screen to the field and a hitch into the boundary. If you give me free access to the hitch into the boundary, I'm going to take it. We had one team I ran it six times in a row, and I, and I caught five hitches into the boundary off of run plays. We just kept taking it all the way down the field. He breaks one, he gets 15. Now you're either going to tighten your corner up, you're going to walk your outside linebacker, cheat your free over, roll your corner up. You're going to do something. But if you're going to give me to my ex, my war daddy, my guy, into the boundary, I should be able to – it's a run for us. We throw enough hitches in practice. You know, we probably throw between 80 and 100 hitches a day. My talk's not on how we get all that done, but um, we throw a lot of hitches. We throw a lot of slants. Okay, I love the slant. We weren't great at it last year. We didn't throw a lot of slants. Okay, but I had a sophomore quarterback. So you play to his strengths. The other thing, the quarterback or the coach checks the coverage in a predetermined sequence and picks or throws or hands the ball off on the run. It's that simple. I like to make those decisions for a young quarterback. I heard Coach Rodriguez when he was at West Virginia speak years ago about some of this type of stuff, and he made it really, really plain and simple. And it made sense to me. You know, I got a mortgage. I make millions of dollars of years a year to do this. And if that kid makes the wrong decision, okay, I'm going to lose my house and my mortgage and I'm going to have to move and find another job. In the meantime, that kid's playing video games and he's still going to be here. So who makes the decision? The guy who's got his job and his career on the line or the guy that played video games till two in the morning the night before? I think I'm going to make that decision. And so for a young player, I want to make that decision. I think that's important. And then as he progresses, we give him more and more responsibility. But I think you got to know that you're in his corner as far as what you're trying to do. Okay, when we talk about post-snap RPOs, we talk about a run combined with a pass. 
It's a built-in concept that attacks all three levels of defense. And so a lot of, we use an A word, that's the front level, the D-line level type deal. Uh, we use a B word if we want to use the linebacker level or the outside linebacker, inside linebacker. We tag our run with a B word so we know we're keying the backer. And then a C word is our third level, you know, which is your progression down the road. A lot of people are experimenting right now with what's called a coke route, which is a C word, where they're trying to get behind that boundary safety coming down, supporting the run, um, trying to get the ball there and playing with the DB. So if we're looking at the third level of defense, we look in terms of first level, second level, and third level. 